Have you ever tried to find a document or a file on your PC? Well, if you use the find feature, then you have used regular expressions without knowing it. And in this video, you are going to learn how to know about what you're doing with those regular expressions, how they work and how you can use them in Python. So let's get started with regex right after the intro. By the way, this is Python Sunday. As you might guess, we are uploading a Python video every Sunday. And if you're interested in Python topics, definitely leave a like and click that subscribe button so that you will be up to date when it comes to Python knowledge. And now let's dive right into the topic. So what is a regular expression? Well, it allows you to search strings even more flexibly. For example, you can use a regular expression to find all numbers in a string or validate an email address could exist in principle. So what that means is that it can search for patterns within a defined string. So let's check it out. In order to use regular expressions, we need to import RE. And then let's say we have this sentence and I'm not gonna type it out, but I'm gonna copy it from where I have it like this. I have 30 dogs that need four liters of water and two kilograms of food each. So pretty heavy, big dogs, right? And they are pretty much cool. But we, what we want to do with this sentence is to check for numbers. So in order to find out whether there are numbers and which numbers there are, we can use something called find all. So in RE, in regular expression in this module, you'll find find all this method or this function and this method and it works the following way. So first you need to enter the pattern that you want to search for. And after the, semi the comma, you can go ahead and say where you want to search for it. So let's say I want to search for a specific pattern in this sentence. Now I can go ahead and do something like square brackets, one or zero minus nine, and then after the square bracket, a plus. So what, that, what will that do? That will give me all numbers that are between zero and nine, but also the ones that are longer, which means also the ones that are not going to be just one character. So this just gives me one character, zero, plus, uh, zero to nine, but with this plus I say, okay, there can be multiple ones afterwards. So at least one, but it could be more. So what does that mean? Well, let's check it out. So it means that this 30 is gonna be included because it gives me one digit, but also the numbers which are containing multiple digits. So for example, the 30. So it gave me the 30, but then it checked, okay, afterwards there is just another digit. So I'm gonna use that or print that out as well. Then the four, it checks, okay, is four between zero and nine? Yes, it's true. So it's gonna give me that value. So as you can see, find all, gives me all the values that fit into a specific pattern within a specific text that I'm ch set checking. And it doesn't have to be a simple string, it could be loads of data. So you could search for a whole book or something like that, or even more. Okay, so that's what this find all does. Now let's have a look at some more examples. So I'm going to copy this sentence because I want to reuse it in here and now there is another one, another method called search. What that will do is it will search for a specific pattern. So the thing that goes within the brackets and it will check it within a string. So within my sentence. So the pattern that I want to look for now is going to be the same. So I'm go also gonna say, okay, give me zero to nine and plus. And what that will do is it will simply check if it's available. So if I run that, you, you see that I get this match where it says there is one match, which is 30. So it only searches for the first match and that's this 30 here, all right? So that's the first match that we have gotten and that's what this research re.search does for us. Now what we also can do is to search for specific words. So let's go through the sentence once again and let's say I want to search for the following. I want to search for have. So let's see if there is have in there and that is in the sentence. 
So if I do that, you see there is a match which is called have, and that is this one here. Now I could search for any type of regular expression pattern here. So what is a regular expression pattern? This is just one regular expression pattern. Here I'm actually using a specific string. So I'm searching for a specific word within the structure. But I could use other ones as well. So let's say I have this E and it says have E. So have doesn't only have one E, but it has multiple E's. If I check that now again, there is still a match, as you can see. It doesn't care, there's still this have match, even though this, it's actually have E. So if I, for example, now use a question mark here, then it's also gonna work. So what does this question mark do? It simply says, is the structure or the word that I'm looking at, does it have multiple E's afterwards? Or this character, zero times or more times? So what that would give me back is, even if this word is just have, as you can see, it still works. So this E question mark, which pretty much means that this last letter is just going to be optional. So those three before, they have to be there, but this last one is optional. So even if I enter haver here, you can see that it's still access or it's still fine with it because, well, this E was optional and that's why this haver is still working well or it's still fine for this particular pattern that we have here. So let's check out some more. Let's search for, or let's print something, re search the star comma, so that's going to be the, this is going to be our pattern. And now let's check the text, hello the hello. Just some very stupid text, nothing very important here. It's just about the principle or the concept. So let's check it out once again with some other text. So this star, what does the star do? Well, the star says this character has to be there zero. This E has to be there zero or more times. So let's check it out. And we see we have this match still with all of them. So this one is with E. And this one is like this. So let's check it out. And as you see, it, this pattern works. So it has to be zero or more times. That was That's what the star says. So th has to be there, but everything else can be optional or more times. So all of them are matching. Now I only have matching examples here. So what if I don't have matching examples? All right, so let's check that out. Let's have the same example with it with a plus. So I'm going to use a plus here, hello the hello, and it's going to say something like hello the without E and here with double E. So you see the first pattern suddenly doesn't fit anymore. So what this plus does is it pretty much says it has to be at least one or more. So this E has to be in the word at least once or multiple times. That's why for this example, we get none returned. And for the other examples, we get something where we get a match returned. So we have matches here. Let's check out an example with numbers. So I'm going to use a number in here where I'm going to use uh, square brackets again. And in here I have zero, one, two, three, and so forth. So everything up to nine. And the text is going to be hello, one, two, three, hello. So is this pattern fitting this text? So is this pattern in a text? And as you can see, yes, it is. So there is a zero or one or two or three in there. And where is it? Well, it's at this one. So we're just looking at one particular character and the first one that we have in this match. So at least that's what the search does, right? The search function only searches for one entry. If we would go for find all here, then you see it gives us the one, two, and three. So it gave us all the versions of this entry. But now if I instead say plus, I suddenly only get one, two, three as the answer. So 123, and that means that this plus that we have checked out here says that now I don't just take the first character that fits, but I take all the other character that 
characters that fit the structure as well. So in this case, digits one, two, and three are all there. So if I add some more digits and I enter that, as you can see, well, it could even be other values. It doesn't have to be that way. As you can see now, it's all one entry. But if I have some other values here, you see it's a new entry. So as soon as there is an empty space or something else in between, so something like a G, for example, as you can see, suddenly this is a completely new entry here again. So that's what we can do with regular expressions. Now, this structure here seems to be a little difficult because, well, it's a lot of typing, right? So what you also can just say is 0 to 9. What that will do is it will simply use all digits from 0 to 9. But the same goes for A to Z. What that will do is it will give us all characters which are of capital or which are capitalized. So as you can see, H is capitalized. So that's why we get H returned. But if I would just use A to Z, suddenly I get hello and I get hello because those are the words that use the alphabet. Now I could also go ahead and say something like A to Z and A to Z, and suddenly you see I get all of them. So I get the capital H and all of the other ones as well. So hello and hello. So both versions. So there's a lot more to, or to know about regex, and there is a little cheat sheet here, regex or regsec.com with a quick starter, and there you have plenty of examples. There is another great resource where you can check out your regular expression straight away. It's called regexer.com. And here you can just enter some text and here you can check out your expression. And at the bottom you can even see what this means, so how it is structured. So here, for example, we have a, a bracket which says we have a capturing group groups multiple tokens together and creates a capture group for extracting a substring or using a back reference. So we have a group, so it, which pretty much means we have not only one character, which is from A to Z, but we have a, multiple characters that are from A to Z. So then we say, okay, it has to start with a capital letter and afterwards there can be a word and which means a word character. So this backslash W means we're talking about any word character, alphanumeric and underscore. So which means that all alphabet characters, all numbers and all underscores will be part of this. This plus means that one or more should be the case. So in this text that we see here at the bottom, this pretty much means that it will mark or it will match all words that start with a capital letter and that have at least one more letter or more. So if I just add something like an R here, you can see this, this R here is not matching. If I add an E on the other hand to this R, suddenly it matches the structure. And the structure pretty much says, okay, I want to have a character, which is a capital character. And afterwards, I want to have another word character or more word characters. So alphanumeric characters. So even something like R1 and so forth will match that structure. And now you can, of course, go ahead and check out a lot more structures because the, well, the regular expression cheat sheet here contains plenty of examples. So the quantifiers is the one that we checked out. The plus, which says one or more. The question mark makes quantifiers lazy, which pretty much here I have some sample examples. One in one, two, three, four, five. So this plus, if you have a number one, two, three, four, five, and you check for D, D stands for digits. So now it checks are all the digits and it's going to give me all of the digits which are connected. So that's a sample match one, two, three, four, five. The question mark on the other hand, it in the same example, one, two, three, four, five, is only going to give me the one, which is a lazy quantifier. Then we have the star, which gives me zero or more, and it is greedy. So it gives me, if we have the structure A star, it's gonna, it's gonna give me A, 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 instead of just an A in this structure. On the other hand, if we do that with a question mark and with the star, we, this is going to be empty. 
okay? So now you can just check out uh, this example here and we are going to use what I've just shown you in a specific example in the next video. So we're gonna have a little challenge for you using regular expressions. Alrighty, so my advice is to check out those two sites and just play around with regexer and in the next video we'll see the result of the next challenge. So good luck with the challenge and see you there. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Now you learned something about regex in Python or about regular expressions in Python. And if you liked the video, then please leave a like and also consider subscribing. And by the way, check out one of those videos. And if you really love the course, then check out the link in the description where you will find the complete Python masterclass. I hope to see you there. Either way, have a nice day.